Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trisha and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trisha's dying to know. I am dying to know. Always. Always. I wonder if Carl is. Is he? Yeah. Well, he just looks dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Tracy, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? Great. Yeah. Great. Thank feeling, you. Feeling good? Feeling good. All good. right, we have a question today from yeah. P. Cole. Hello, how Hello. are you? Hello. Thanks for your question. Now, I would just preface this one by saying it's a big question. Yeah. And we really, you only like to speak from experience, don't you? Yes, yes. So there's only so much of this one we can answer. But the question yeah. was, what happens when a body goes for an autopsy to the coroner's? Mm -hmm. What sort of an examination do they do? Mm-hmm. Uh, is the process in Australia the same as it is in other countries, i.e. New Zealand, New Zealand, that's <laughs> New a new Zealand. country, sorry, <laughs> Kiwis, New Zealand, uh, Canada, America, Britain, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the world, um, yeah. And um, I guess also we can tag onto that um, what happens when you get the body back. Yes. 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 Discuss. Because we have to just make it clear that I do not do autopsies. And I think P. Cole knew that, by the way, yeah. the question was written. Yeah. But because just, you don't do autopsies, and yeah. have you ever seen an autopsy? No. No, I've never and I've never seen an autopsy apart from on telly. On telly when I've watched Gunther, but no, I haven't watched an autopsy. So we can only sort of, well, you can only sort of speculate based on what you get back. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, what do they do and what kind of autopsy do the bodies have? Now, that's a, that's a huge question that can't be answered as in, because there's so many different things that pathologists do, that doctors do to examine a body. Uh, and I'll just go through a, a, a list of what happens at the coronial end uh, of what goes on, um, which will give you a broader idea of sometimes the bodies don't even get autopsied. You know, they're not even cut open as in the Y suture and the head and everything. Sometimes there's no need to actually physically open the body. But I am not an expert. I don't work in that area. I just know from experience of receiving bodies back from um, the coroners of uh, the way they're presented and the paperwork we get back to see what has happened. So, for instance, yes. And can I just say, people go to the coroner when cause of death needs to be found. Yes, yes. If, so, for instance, say little Betty in the nursing home had a fall and she died from the fall. But that's, was she pushed? That's coronial. And it doesn't mean to say she's going to have an autopsy. It just means she may not even go to the coroner's because half the time we have them in our care. And uh, what we've got to get right here is a coroner is not the pathologist. So the coroner is the, what we call, it's like a judge. Um, the coronial bit, this coroner person, that person will go through the medical history and that person will go through the circumstances and then they'll decide whether or not there's an autopsy to be performed or not. So they've got a medical law background. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah not necessarily medical as far as the people who do the cutting and the doing. Yeah, so the coroner will then go, okay, it's, yeah, I'm happy with this, sign it off. We don't need any intervention whatsoever. Little bit, it can be signed off on a Form 9, which is basically what the doctor would uh, give if she just died naturally in the nursing home and asleep. So they'd say, no, no uh, coronial investigation anymore. I'm happy with it was an accident. Okay. But if the coroner's not happy, then it'll go either we need you to do an autopsy or toxicologies or whatever. Then that goes to the doctors, which are the pathologists, which takes 15 to 20 years to become a pathologist. It's, you know... It's a major thing, and I'm certainly not one of them. So that's that's kind of what happens at the coroner's area. So you've got your coroner deciding what to do, and now they're going to say, yep, pathologist, all we need is tox. And an example of why they might need that is, say Betty didn't have a fall, Betty's come in from the nursing home, but um, Betty was had no overriding sickness yep. and Betty had some strange markings around her eyes and yep. around her lips that suggested she might have had an allergic reaction or something yep. that something, twigs them yep. and goes, hang on a minute, we need to do some more testing here yep. to make sure everything was above board. Yeah, or the nursing home or whatever changed her medication. Hmm. 
you know, something yeah. like that. So the, the coroner then might go to the pathologist. You just need to do some tox tests. So basically what toxicology tests is, is they will take uh, bloods and urines and they'll just, uh, the same as taking blood anyway, they take the blood from the femorals. Um, sometimes they'll take the bloods from the arms as well. So just like normal taking your bloods anyway and urine and swabs and different things like that so they'll go that's all we need so it's less invasive so yeah mm. and that's it or could have been it, it could be a fall um so they'll suggest doing a ct scan now a lot of bodies here in queensland australia get um ct scan these days and less and less autopsies are happening because of that so basically a ct scan is going to see into the body without opening it and they can say there's a fracture here yeah this is it this is what happened they get all the information the coroner gets his information he gets that report from the pathologist they put it all together and they'll come out with yeah it was an accident and, and it's a fracture to the whatever or wherever um, or it could be a violent kind of death that's when the coroner would probably uh, order the pathologist to do an autopsy so that means opening up the body and the thing with uh, certain deaths is they're looking for say somebody has been in a fight and died they're looking for internal bruising as well external bruising and internal bleeding and internal injuries but I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that you know but I, I, that's the general idea of what I've been told and <laughs> what's happened as we get them back so to order an autopsy for the body to be open is up to the coroner and whether or not that happens and for whatever reason it happens. So they might order a, just a, a partial autopsy, which is just the top part of your body, or they might order a full autopsy, which is the full opening of the Y suture and the head post where the open head and take the brain out and, and examine. you also say that they cut up here sometimes. When we've had people that's been, um, uh, when it's homicide cases, yeah, they have full autopsies where they'll open the arms, the back, the legs, the the normal Y suture in the head. So they're, what they're looking for is internal bruising everywhere around the body to check or other injuries that may have happened. So yeah, when it's a homicide, then it's a total different ball game. It's you know, there's a lot goes on to examine. Um, a lot goes on uh, during the coronial case. There's either very little or lots. So and sometimes they can be there for months and months and months and they freeze them, don't they? Because they're waiting yeah. for test results to come back. Yeah, or... sometimes they do. But a lot of the times they'll, they'll take um, what they call biopsies of different organs and different things and release the body to us for right. if they're happy with the the um, samples they've taken from the body and they're happy they don't feel the need to keep the body anymore they will release for burial or cremation with permission but yet the investigation's still going on so it's a bit like you know when you're watching your CSI and all of that you don't find out within the hour of what they've died of and how it is because toxicology tests can take six months to eight months and you know investigations of uh, studying um, samples from uh, organs and all the pathologies that has to happen can take months and months and months and I think in the question was, can you ask the coroner uh, mm. questions? Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. And you should have a report. The coroner is the one that does all the reporting and does the end reports. So everything should be in the report. And if you question, I know you can hear, um, the, I think you have to write a letter, though, to our uh, court system here. You've got to write a letter. And it's the same as if somebody, if a family member decides they want their person uh, autopsied, you know, it's not a coronial case or anything like that. They have to write to the coroner to say, I think this, and it's up to the coroner then to decide, you know, so it's not just say, yeah, they'll do it, you know, so it's a process that you have to go through. I had a relative that was in that situation, similar to you, P. Cole. Um, and because uh, P. Cole said at the beginning of this that they had a person, a person that was currently yeah, under, under being investigated by a coroner. Um, and uh, this person that I knew here in Australia had quite a, um, a regular contact with the coroner's officers 
and there was a lot of sort of updating of we've done these samples now. Okay. Are you okay if we send this away to them? Oh, great. And there was a lot of talk and, and communication around when the body was going to be released. And it was oh, quite, really they good, seemed yeah. to be quite uh, accessible. Yeah. quite um contactable and yeah. um but but it was interesting i thought that the coroner's officers not the coroner themselves but the coroner's yeah. officers were making that contact with the family yeah. initially they initiated yeah. it yeah and they are very good here mm. the uh the coroner's office that do the talking because yes it's not the coroner that will make the calls and you'll talk to but it's the office so yeah, it is good. So here in Queensland, Australia, we do have a good coronial system like that, where they, you know, you can do a lot of the interacting with the, uh, the uh, officers themselves, and yeah, they'll get the information. So you need to wherever you are in the world. We're not sure where you are, but um, you know, write to your uh, the local place where your uh, your coronial place is, and where they do the autopsies and things like that. I'll give them a call. Give them a call. Yeah. And so when you get them back, we've done plenty of videos on what you have yeah. to do after yeah. that, and we yeah. might um, point to one of those up here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, just run them through that really quickly. So if it's an open autopsy they've had, the Y suture, the head post, I'll um, clean that area up. If it needs cleaning up, if the suture's not very tidy because you know they're about you know finding investigations where about you know the uh that word i can't say aesthetics that word. i was waiting for it yeah because i can't say it uh, so we're more about that so i could undo the switches and redo them and redo the head switches so cleaning everything up make sure there's no blood no leakage or anything like that and basically um Put everything neatly back together that's what i do i don't do autopsies or have anything to do with them. so i've seen many autopsy cases after the event but not during so yeah so Be interesting to watch one but i don't think it's the sort of thing that you could just go yeah. hi we've got a youtube channel can we please watch an autopsy <laughs> yeah i mean it would be interesting to watch it but you know i'm i'm really not sure if i'll really want to watch one actually no that's no. a good point and um i yeah. mean if there's any pathologists out there who are yeah. involved in that field and want to come and talk to us and shed some more light i put us right kiss we've said anything that's absolutely both you know poo you know that's you know, that, I, that i could have you know, poo. you know that i could have just uh you know Hopefully I haven't, but I'm trying not to, to say that I know all these to know about a coronial case because I don't. Because she doesn't. So, I don't, yeah. So, but yeah, if there's any pathologists or the coroner themselves, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys. Thanks for that question, P. Cole. We yes. appreciate you yeah. getting in contact. Yeah, we do. And um, don't forget to send your questions in. Everybody, yes. we love to hear from you. We do, yes. And um, yeah, we'll I talk to you later. It. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye. We have a question today from mm -hmm. P. Cole. Hello. Hello, P. Is it Paul? Peter? P. I don't know. I don't know. P. 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 Pedro. P. Cole. P. Patricia? Patricia. It could be a lady. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, Pat. Pat. Petunia. Oh, that, there's a name I haven't heard for a Petunia. long time. Petunia. Petunia.